Good morning class. Welcome to TCW 100. So for this week, we will be discussing about chapter 5 of your book, um, Convergence. So chapter 5 talks about Asian regionalism. So I hope by this time, you already have the ability to cope with the discussion or lectures in international um, community because we have been discussing about different multilateral um, agreements and bilateral agreements between members of the international community. Okay, so examples of multilateral treaties were the ones the one discussed um, two weeks ago about the creation of the World Bank and creation of the International Monetary Fund. We already talked about the establishment of the United Nations, the Charter of the United Nations and the organs comprising the United Nations. And just last week, we have discussed about the global north and the global south, the nature of this dichotomy, the nature and reason of the division, as well as the implication of designating them as a member of the global north and members of the global south okay so from the title itself primarily we will talk here about the regions within the asian continent okay <clears throat> so what are the learning outcomes in so far as chapter 5 is concerned first is to explain what asian regionalism is and its purpose Second is to undermine the rationale behind the creation of such regional organization. And third is to understand the current issues, problems, as well as prospects for the future of Asian regionalism. So re fourth is to recognize how Asian regionalism affects the world within the greater backdrop of globalization. And lastly is to equip students with 21st century learning and develop higher order thinking skills that will lead towards a deeper understanding of Asian regionalism as well as articulate a stance, how it impacts the Philippines, the Filipino society, and the individual self as a part of a global community. So this is a very important topic. This is very fundamental for us Filipinos because we are one of the members of this particular regionalism, okay? So we are directly and indirectly affected by the programs and actions of these different organizations within Asian continent, okay? So first of all, we have to answer the question, what is Asian regionalism all about, okay? According to the book, Asian regionalism is the product of economic interaction, okay? Particularly East Asian economies in particular focused on exporting to developed country markets rather than selling to each other. Initially, they specialize in simple labor-intensive manufacturers. So from that conceptualization, from that definition, we can therefore imply and conclude that Asian regionalism primarily was created to have an economic cooperation. Unlike in United Nations, which is the largest and powerful organization, the purpose of such creation is for both economic and political creation. Although in Asian regionalism, there is still semblance of political um, cooperation and communication However, from, that, from this definition, we can really say that its focus is more on the economic aspect no, of each government. Okay? But of course, countries interact through their governments. Yun nga, if you do not have an established government, okay, it, is a, um, possible, it is a possibility that you cannot interact anymore with these different countries. Okay? So what is the importance of regionalism? Okay, 
regionalism is important because it has been proven to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of local governments. More efficient government helps keep taxes and fees lower. Lastly, not every issue is better solved through a regional approach and in fact, there are many instances where it just cannot work. So again, economic activities is much more easier if there is an economic cooperation. So sir, how do you create that economic cooperation? By forming organization. How do you form organization? Each country or each member state has to sign on a particular charter. Just like the United Nations, Asian regionalism or Asian organizations do have their own particular charter. Okay, so who drafts this charter, Asian or ASEAN charter or APEC charter for that matter? Of course, it is the members, no? the direct members of that organization are the ones and authorized who will sign no? the charter. This charter will serve as their guideline. This charter will serve as their governing body or governing rule no? to guide the actions of the member states. Okay? So the importance of regionalism First bullet is pooling and marketing regional assets to the world where appropriate. Location decisions within the region based on unique strengths of geographies and project wins benefit the entire region regardless of jurisdiction and partnerships. Assure businesses of regional support and initiative. Okay, so as you notice, its focus is on the economic aspect of the countries, no, in the continent of. Asia. Okay? So in the first place, why was regionalism or concept of regionalism was created? Because of the previous problems. No? Again, because of the Cold War and the colonization, no? it triggers the countries to create and formulate on their own. Within the Southeast Asian region, within the East Asian region no? that they should create a cooperation. They should formulate a cooperation in order to uh, efficiently serve their own people. At the same time, they can develop collectively. No? So again, the implications, there are a lot of implications if you enter into organization no? such as ASEAN and APEC or even EU, UN. Okay? So what are the economic implications? They open the borders of each country. But of course, opening the border does not mean na absolute talaga na you can just enter that particular country without restrictions. There are still restrictions. But it is more lenient if there is cooperation. If there is an understanding between the countries. So mas madali ka na lang magpunta doon just like for the Philippines. We can visit Russia na, no? because um, they offer visa free to Filipinos. Although in some um, limited places and areas in Russia, and for a particular period lang. Okay? So that's the advantage somehow of creating or entering into economic agreements. No? Or multilateral, be it bilateral or multilateral agreements. Okay? So in the context of international relations, regionalism is the manifestation or expression of a common sense of cultural identity and purpose combined with the creation and implementation of institutions that express a particular identity and shape collective action within a geographical region. So there is a sense of commonality between the member states in that particular region. Okay? One best example would be the Arab nations. No? So what's the common commonality or common culture or identity between Arab nations? So ang unang papatak sa isip natin will always be the religion no? of the, that particular region. Same goes with the APEC and ASEAN. 
our members in the Asian continent. We share the same culture, we share, we share the same tradition, and that is why it is ideal for us to create a particular organization who will work and who will um, help the countries who are economically unstable and politically unstable so that no one is left behind. No? Because although there is a cooperation, meron man talaga mga bansa na nag suffer from poverty. No? Just like for example, in ASEAN, we can really say that Cambodia, Vietnam maybe, and what's the other, Myanmar, no? are not in the same level um, of other members in the um, Association of Southeast Asian Nation. So that's the uh, another important issue that the organization has to focus into. Okay? That no country shall be left behind. Because in the first place, this is a cooperation and it shall not benefit only one in particular country. Okay? So most of the regional blocks like EU and the ASEAN were crafted out of a shared commonality and oneness of operation. So you cannot enter into a particular organization or something like association if you do not share the same sentiments, if you do not share the same aspiration or dreams for that particular, uh, for that particular organization. If you have if you believe in a, in a different um, in a different belief or in a different ideology with that of organization, it is impossible for that organization to survive because the prerequisite or the condition sine qua non before you enter into a particular organization is that you must have a commonality of interest and aspiration. Okay. So, ano ba sim uh, to to simply put, no? What is their purpose, no? To become economically stable states, to become an economically stable region, okay, in Asian continent, okay. It should be noted, however, that most of the regional organizations established, especially after World War II are basically anchored on economic integration, okay? Economic regionalism refers to institutional arrangements designed to facilitate the free flow of goods and services and to coordinate foreign economic policies between countries in the same geographic region or nearby local. Economic regionalism can be viewed as a conscious attempt to manage the opportunities and constraints created by the dramatic increase in international economic ties to foster economic growth and prosperity among its member states. So examples of economic regionalism include free trade areas, custom unions, common markets, and economic unions. So basically, let's differentiate a country without affiliation to an organization and a country who is affiliated to a certain organization. If you are a country who has no affiliation, who has no agreements or friendly relationship with other countries, it's hard for you to enter into economic activities with other countries or even your neighboring countries. Okay? So if you want to export products, you cannot just easily export your locally produced products because there are restrictions from your neighboring country. So what are these restrictions? The tariff rates primarily, no? And other countries might charge you higher and expensive tariff rates. Same goes with countries who has no um, affiliation with the international uh, organizations like um, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund you cannot go there because in the first place, you are not a member thereof, okay? So that's the disadvantage of um, having no or single affiliation with your neighboring countries. 
So this is the best thing that economic regionalism offers because it's op it opens the border between the neighboring nations. Okay? Trade partnership. Okay? Economic cooperation partnership. Okay? So, for example, Indonesia will produce coal, um, coal, no? Uling. Okay? So, what's the purpose of the uling? Para maka work, no? Ang ato ang mga fire, fire plant, power plants, no? In the Philippines. Okay? So, we import products from Indonesia in exchange of a particular product that we can offer to them. Okay? At a lower rate at an inexpensive tariff rate okay so that's the idea no free trade agreement custom union common market economic union and it follows it follows the political union okay so that's the advantage no of having an economic regionalism having an economic cooperation it gives you the privilege of entering into economic activities with other nations regionalism in asia so many things have been said about asia especially about its sheer size population resources and its capability to dominate the global and economic environment so as to the contiguous um, territory no talagang malalapit lang naman ang mga bansa na nakapabilang sa Southeast Asia nation, no? Southeast Asian region rather. So it can be said that the gravity of world economic, political and security affairs has shifted to Asia. Okay? So the Asian Development Bank uh, even went as far as saying that the region's economy is already similar in size to those of Europe and North America and its influence in the world continues to increase. Did you know that um, regionalism in Asia is the sixth largest economic um, capability worldwide? No? So the call for regional economic cooperation is essential for addressing these challenges, especially that these countries, no, there are several countries which um, territory lies in the Pacific Ring of Fire. No, did you know that? Okay, so what's the effect of that? If your country is within the Pacific Ring of Fire, the ulunun ka og mga calamities and bagyo, just like the Philippines, Japan, etc. Okay, so it's very hard on the part of these countries because. Imbis na pataas na ang kanilang economic um, standing, no? because of these unfortunate calamities, balik na naman sila sa so good. Why? Because it will destroy your investments. Second, it will destroy and prevent you from producing your local products. Bakit? Kung babaha, wala kang maitanim. Kung babaha, walang trabaho okay so it's really hard on your part tapos sabayan mo pa ng pandemic okay so this is largely because of asia's unprecedented growth in the past few decades led by economic powerhouses japan china and south korea just like in any um, economic um, capacity of nations class no it fluctuates from time to time because of these problems, no? Because of these catastrophes, okay? So just like for the Philippines, Philippines was the largest um, economic growth in Southeast Asia, and one of the largest uh, economic growth in Southeast Asian region. But because of problems like, you know, uh, typhoon and sabayan pa ng pandemic, okay? So, what do you expect, of course, for the economy in the Philippines? No? It will downgrade from where it started. Okay? So, it's very difficult and 
uh, very unfortunate on the part of these countries which property lies within the Pacific Ring of Fire. Kasi nga sila ang best target ng effects uh, ng climate change. So this is the ASEAN Outlook 2019. In the book, there is an ASEAN Outlook but it was based in the year 2018 pa. Okay? GDP growth for the region is expected to come in at 5% in 2019. An escalation of the trade war between the US and China is the key downside risk to growth given that both countries are key export markets. Okay, always, always remember that the ASEAN or economic regionalism in, in Asian continent does not only focus solely on economic aspects or economic activities. It also focuses on the threat of terrorism, the spread of diseases, massive technolo technological innovations, and geopolitical um, uncertainties. Okay? Although, we can really say that its focus really is economic aspect, but there are social, uh, socio-cultural and socio-economic aspects that they tend to focus into. Okay? So our panel projects that Myanmar will be the fastest growing economy in the region next year, which is their goal really. Kasi gusto nila i-help yung Myanmar and Cambodia no? na makasabay sila sa other Southeast Asian countries. Okay? So with a 7.2% expansion as it continues to benefit from structural reforms and greater economic liberalization. Conversely, Singapore is expected to record the weakest expansion at 2.6%. So we can really say that the economic standing of Asian countries in the uh, international community is siguro in the middle because in Asian continent, we can see there the poorest of the poor, maybe poorest countries as well as those richest ones. Okay, So maybe uh, we're in the middle of the, that particular aspect no, sa international community. So the Asian miracle, as many would refer to the rap rapid economic transformation in the 80s, did not end with the 1977 uh, to 1998 financial crisis for some countries. It marked the beginning of renewed acceleration. So the question is no longer whether Asia will be central to the 21st century economy, but rather how it will exercise its prominent role and how its dependence on the rest of the world has decreased. Sir, if we enter into um, economic organization or political organization in Asia, are we going to remove or divest our independence? No. no. So even if you enter into a particular organization, your independence as a country remains. Sir, what do you mean by independence? meaning they cannot intervene with our purely internal matters in the Philippines. So kahit kaano pa tayo ka-close, kahit gaano pa tayo ka-close sa China, sa US, sa Singapore, sa Indonesia, no, it will not divest us of our independence, meaning they cannot intervene with the issues within the Philippines. Okay? So I know and I do not know if you have heard the president always reminding the other members in the United Nations, members in the ASEAN, no? Na we shall preserve our independence. Always remember that if we enter into economic agreements or political agreements, it does not divest of our independence. You do not have the authority to dictate us, to intervene with our problem, ne? And, of course, to tell us what to do for our countries because that's our country and we are an independent country and you do not have the power to enforce your rule or authority over us. Again, independence is preserved. So Asia's econom economies are increasingly connected through trade, financial transactions, direct investment, technology, labor and tourist flows and other economic relationships. The regional order that is present in the Asian region is spurred by the fact that there exist patterns of similarities too great to escape 
scrutiny. So Asia includes some of the world's wealthiest economies and some of its poorest. Ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina. Large continental powers as well as small city-states, continuous, continuously independent countries and former colonies. Again, what is the solution if you are not independent country? You have to go to the trusteeship Council of the United Nations because the trusteeship, trusteeship Council will help formerly colonized countries to become self-governing and independent nations. Okay, always remember that. So its strength, strength derives from the openness, diversity, and dynamism of its interconnected economy. economy. So what do you mean by interconnected or interdependence? Again, there are things that other countries need and there are things that we need but only other countries can provide for us. Okay? Just like the Philippines, we need technologies but we cannot produce our own technologies by uh, maybe our own factories because we do not have the capability of producing those no? or large amount of production that our citizens and our kababayan needs no so it is always a possibility that we need other countries to help us of our necessities and there are also things that kailangan nila sa atin just like for example mga agricultural products raw materials no that they need for their citizens and for their countries and that's the meaning of interconnectedness in the economy or interdependence in the economic aspect okay the cultural ties anchored mainly on language and religion are also solid frontiers to argue for greater cooperation on a regional platform so it is more easier to organize a particular organization if the country is only living or situated in the same region just like the southeast asia no? Actually, yun na nga ang sinasabi ko, the perfect um, in terms of geographical aspect, no? the perfect organization will always be the European Union no? because they are situated in a particular region, contiguous lands, no? meaning tapad-tapad lang ang kanilang lands no? and even uh, in in European Union, you can work from other uh, countries for as long as that country is also a member of the EU. No, so that's how they. Uh, that's how extensive is their economic operation in the European Union. Okay. The question is that must Asia continue to go on with its established regional patterns? Should there be more integration the answer is yes no a more dynamic and outward looking asian regionalism could bring huge benefits not just to asia but more importantly to the world again no man is an island in the same vein no country is an island uh, no may island sir na kuan but not literally no again uh, no man is an island because of the term interconnectedness and interdependency. No? So, kung wala kay ka trade partner, be, naka kay cellphone, no? naka kay computer, naka kay luxurious cars dira sa inyo ang balay. No, no, that's not possible. Okay, so that's why it is very important to enter into economic operations such as this no it could help sustain the region's growth underpin its stability and with the right policies reduce inequality and address the perennial problem of poverty okay that's their problem uh, that's one of their rationale and objective no to address the problem on poverty. Daghan na kayo nagprograma aning poverty class. Kanusa pa man ni mamatay ang poverty, oy? No? 
as you remember in chapter 2, di ba? That's the main purpose of the World Bank, no? Wherein on the countries can only borrow or lend money from the World Bank is when there is a program addressing or resolving the problem of poverty. Okay? It could help marshal a common response to major new challenges that often arise suddenly and unexpectedly. Okay, the imperative uh, for regionalism in Asia. What are the essential advantages and benefits of regionalism in Asia? Asian Development Bank or ADB paper on emerging Asian nationalism outlines some of more integral considerations regarding the need for regionalism in Asia. No? It is held that Asian integration can result in the following. Number one, generate productivity gains, new ideas, and competition that boost economic growth and raise incomes across the world. Second is to contribute to the efficiency and stability of global financial markets by making Asian capital markets stronger and safer and by maximizing the productivity use of Asian savings. Three is diversify sources of global demand, helping to stabilize the world economy and diminish the risks posed by global imbalances and downturns in other major economies. Fourth is to provide leadership to help sustain open global trade and financial system. Lastly, create regional mechanisms to manage health, safety, and environmental issues better and thus contribute more effective global solutions of these problems. Sir, if you are a member of a certain organization like just like ASEAN, can you still enter into bilateral agreement with other country who is also a member of that particular organization? The answer is yes. Just like China and Philippines, we have an existing economic bilateral agreement. At the same time, China and Philippines are both members of APEC. No? So you can still enter into agreement. Okay? Ang importante lang dito, class, is that your actions should be consistent and should be congruent to the charter of the organization. As a member of the organization, you have the obligation to follow and always uphold no? the purposes and aspirations of your organization. Okay, ganyan lang. Asia's growing economic interdependence provides many opportunities for cooperation. Okay, these are divided into four major areas in this analysis. What are these? Trade, investment, and the integration of real economic activity, financial integration, macroeconomic policy links, and shared social and environmental concerns. Actually, according to uh, Bloomberg, no, um, they are actually projecting for a labor system just like the EU is currently practicing were in which members of the Southeast Asian region or citizens of the members of the Southeast Asian region can go to other member states and they can look for a job there. No? So, yan ang ginalook forward nila. As well as financial integration in yung pagkakaroon ng uniform economic currency or money currency. Okay? But again, that's still uh, part of the plan and they are projecting it. No? So let's just wait if it would be possible. But ngayon, it's hard for um, countries, actually, actually those who are already unstable uh, with respect to the economy, kasi nga, nagka-pandemic. Nagka no? So kung nagka-pandemic, tapos mahirap pa yung bansa mo, mas lalo kang maghihirap. No? Unlike in other countries who are already rich, just like Singapore, no? at least, mababawasan lang yung, ano nila, yung economic growth nila. But not to the point na talagang magsasuffer and maghihirap ang kanilang 
citizens. Okay? So that is still one of the reasons that uh, the members of the Asian regionalism or members of both ASEAN and APIC has to work into by the time na mawala na itong uh, problems, e problems of COVID-19. Okay? Because the after effects, ngayon, hindi pa gaanong di pa gaano visible ay actually visible na ang problem but there are lots to come after the COVID-19 because everyone will spend money for the vaccines no so they needed uh, enough money to sustain the uh, vaccine for for example the Philippines no we have maybe 100 plus million people in Indonesia, they have, I think, 210 million uh, Indonesian people. No, So your government really has to pay for the vaccine, has to spend money for the vaccine. And the question is, how will you recover that by the time the problem of COVID-19 is already resolved? Okay. So these are the policies. Um, comprising the economic development. One is the macroeconomic stability. When we say macroeconomic stability, it focuses on the economic growth of countries, not only um, within the region and not only within your country. But it talks about the economic stability, economic growth nationwide. What's your standing in the, what's the standing of economic aspect in the international community. Okay? When we say macro, kuan ba? Kaning extensive. When we say macro, kanang uh, larger in scope. No? In contrast with the microeconomic uh, aspect. Okay? So, second is privatization and deregulation. Again, best example for this, um, saba, Meralco, no? Our, our our energy is governed by or controlled by the Meralco. So it is owned by private corporations. That's why it's there's such a process. Uh, there, the, the process is so-called privatization. Third is effective tax collection, um, investment in public services, development of manufacturing and the foreign aid okay so the value at in times of uh, calamities there are foreign aids that we receive from other uh, non-government organization and foreign aids coming from the um, different organizations which we were which we are uh, affiliated into okay so let's start with the first um, Asian regional organization so, but before that, we have to watch this first.
Okay, so that's uh, how it explained um, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. No? So again, it is a regional grouping of nation states predominantly occupying the Southeast Asian local. It can be regarded as, as a regional intergovernmental organization comprising 10 Southeast Asian countries which seeks to promote intergovernmental cooperation and facilitates economic, political, security, military, no, educational and sociocultural integration amongst its members and other Asian countries as well as with the rest of the world. Okay, So with respect to economic cooperation that's already given that it is more favorable if you engage in economic activities because the the territories are some of the member states are contiguous, no? Contiguous territories. Yung iba malalapit lang although they are archipelagic just like Indonesia and the Philippines, okay? So it's much more easier if you engage in economic operation with them kasi nga by the the process of transporting products from one country to another is much more uh, convenient. Okay? With respect to the political aspect, no, of course, we adhere to um, principles under the international law on what should governments uh, do with respect to the programs, no, and as well as to maintain, of course, the friendly relationship between the member states, and as much as possible, we prevent, no the occurrence of conflict between nations. Although conflict is inevitable, but there are mechanisms and solutions to resolve types of issues no, or types of conflicts. Security, um, military cooperation, okay? educational cooperation. Uh, best example is your favorite K-12 program. No, So this is where this is where our government uh, officials derive the idea of um, conducting this type of program, K-12 program. So these are the countries um, of the ASEAN, you know, member states of ASEAN, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam, Laos, and the Philippines. So Asian was established on August 8, 1967 in Bangkok, Thailand with the signing of the ASEAN um, Declaration. So actually, Philippines is one of those you know, who founded the ASEAN Foundation. Okay, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. They were the first member states. Okay in the creation or the people or the countries behind the creation of the Association of Southeast Asian Nation. So in 1984, this is the year when Brunei Darussalam joined the association. Vietnam in 1995, um, Laos and Myanmar uh, in the year 1997 and Cambodia in 1999. So making up what is today the 10 member states of ASEAN. Okay? So, ang last ulahi nga ni Apil kay ang Cambodia. So, these are the aims and purposes of ASEAN. First is to accelerate the economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region through the joint endeavors in the spirit of equality and partnership in order to strengthen the foundation for a prosperous and peaceful community of Southeast Asian nations. No? Uh, guapo kaayo ang ilahang aim no? for the region. Second is to promote regional peace and stability through abiding respect for justice and the rule of law no? in the relationship among countries of the region and adherence to the principles of the United Nations Charter. So, say pasabot na sir. The Charter of the ASEAN should be consistent and should not be contrary to the Charter of the United Nations. Okay? Di pwede na mayroong conflict ang United Nations and the ASEAN Charter. Dapat the ASEAN char Charter should be in line or consistent to the principles established in the Charter of the United Nations. 
promote active collaboration and mutual assistance on matters of common interest in the economic, social, cultural, technical, scientific, and administrative fields, and to provide assistance to each other in the form of training and research facilities in the educational, professional, technical, and administrative spheres. They also aim to collaborate in agriculture and industries, expansion of trade, study of the problems of international commodity trade, improvement of their transportation, communications facilities, and the raising of the living standards of the peoples to promote Southeast Asian studies and maintain close and beneficial cooperation with existing international and regional organizations with similar aims and purposes. Okay? So, sir, is the ASEAN similar with United Nations? Definitely not. No? Sa member states pa lang, sobrang liit ng ASEAN. Secondly, the ASEAN has no enforcement power. Meaning, in terms of conflict or when there is a violation, we cannot actually um, reprimand a particular country just like in the United Nations. No? Again, who has the right to uh, prevent the aggressions in the United Nations? It is the members of the Security Council, the permanent five. Okay? In ASEAN, there is no permanent five or permanent three or two. Okay? So it has no enforcement and um, enforcement power. Okay? So fundamental principles, it was based in the year 1967, the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. What do you mean by amity? The friendly relationship, mutual respect for the independence, sovereignty, equality, territorial integrity, and national identity of all nations. Again, it doesn't mean that you are a member of a particular um, organization or association like ASEAN. You are already opening your territory from other members, no? Still, the independence, sovereignty, and integrity of your territory is preserved. Okay, di pwede nga si Singapore, mga to Philippines, mga siya isda. We friends bitaw ta, niya both members ta. So, tinabangay lang good ta. Can I get your fish there in Samal, no? Di pwede. Again, territorial integrity is still preserved despite the affiliation. Okay? Hindi pwede na basta na lang sila magpasok dito without following our rules no? and regulations in entering our country and they can just get our resources without our consent. That's not valid and that's illegal. The rights of every state to lead its national existence free from external interference, subversion, and coercion. Again, it does not mean that we are friends and it does not mean that you are a powerful, more powerful country than us. Okay? They can just coerce us. They can just coerce our people. They can just um, punish our people without due process. No? Kaya nga, usually, di ba, yung mga Filipino, kapag merong... Uh, May, may nakasala dito sa kanila. For example, napatay nila yung amo nila because of abuse. Um, maybe some committed abuses. That's why the Filipinos or a Filipino napatay niya yung amo niya. No? That's when Philippine government enters through the Department of Foreign Affairs. So mag-usap sila, what's your rule about this? And of course, if you are a member of that particular organization, you have to follow you know, what's the rule in that particular country. For example, sa atin, pag merong um, Indonesian na nagdala ng droga, pwede ba na i, ano na lang natin, i, na bigyan sila ng immunity because we are friends anyway? No. We have to implement our rule of law here in the Philippines. Okay? So, in that case, they have to respect the rule of law in the Philippines. If we uh, punish that type 
of actions or that illegal acts, then they cannot do uh, something about it. Okay? But they can talk and they can agree on. No? Non-interference in the internal affairs of one another. Okay? So, kung may mga issues dito with respect to kung sa ba? Um, rallying. No? Nagrarally ang mga UP students. Nagrarally ang mga activists. Okay? Can they intervene and, oh, ano bang problema dito, Philippines? Bakit itong ano? Can Singapore do that? No. But because that's considered as an internal affair and you do not have the right to intervene. Right? Settlement of differences or disputes by peaceful manner. Okay? If there is a conflict, we talk. Okay? Settle the differences between nations. If you cannot settle, you go to arbitration no? and you settle your problems or issue there. Renunciation of the threat or use of force. Again, aggressive war is prohibited but not defensive war. Okay? Paano kung si Myanmar atakihin siya ni Cambodia? Di day musukol si Cambodia kahit tungod they're both members of the ASEAN. No? In that case, Cambodia can retaliate. Again, defensive war may be allowed. Lastly, is effective cooperation among themselves. No, that includes political, security, military, and economic aspects. So this is the ASEAN Community Pillars. No, the APSC, the ASEAN Political Security Community, enhance rules and good governance for ASEAN. ASEAN Economic Community, AEC, Enhanced Integration and Competitiveness of ASEAN, and Sociocultural Community, ASCC, Enhanced the Well-Being and Livelihood of ASEAN Peoples. Just like the United Nations, they also have organs. Dito, community pillars ang tawag. So now we proceed with APEC. Okay, so let's watch this first. Saan ba yun? Bakit ayaw?
So APEC is a regional economic forum established in 1989 to leverage the growing interdependence of the Asia Pacific. Okay. So APEC's 21 members aim to create greater prosperity for the people of the region by promoting balanced, sustainable, innovative, and secure growth and by accelerating regional economic integration. So APEC ensures that good services, investment, and people move easily across borders. So this is the unique thing about ASEAN and APEC because in APEC and the ASEAN, the members are equal footing, are in equal footing, meaning they have the same authority and they have the same equal power. No? So unlike in United Nations, di ba, only the members of the P5 can decide on behalf of the United Nations. Here in APEC, they can equally vote for what they believe and for what they want for the organization. Okay? So members facilitate this trade through um, faster customs procedures at borders, more favorable business climates behind border and aligning regulations and standards across the region. Okay? So example um, of APEX initiative to synchronize regulatory systems are a key step to integrating the Asia-Pacific economy. APEX members also implement initiatives to increase energy efficiency and promote sustainable management of forest and marine resources. No? The, forum, the forum adapts to allow members to deal with the important new challenges to the region's economic well-being. So this includes ensuring uh, disaster resilience, planning for pandemics, and addressing terrorism. So this is quite larger than the ASEAN with respect to or in the aspect of the geographical limits. Why? Because ASEAN focused solely on the members of the Southeast Asian region while the APEC no, both welcomes the countries in Asia and in the Pacific part of the world. So APEX 21 member economies are Australia, Brunei Darussalam, Canada, Chile, China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, Republic of Korea, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Peru, the Philippines, the Russian Federation, Singapore, um, Chinese Taipei, Thailand, USA, and Vietnam. APEC cooperates as a cooperative multilateral economic and trade forum. So it's a multilateral um, agreement no, between nations. Um, sir, what's the difference between economic agreement and a treaty? When we say agreements, no, executive agreements, these are decided by the president only. No, when we say treaty, the president does not only decide for it, but it's the Congress, both the, uh, I no no no, only the Senate. No, the Congress will decide with respect to treaty, but for executive agreements lang, it's the president who will decide. No, siya lang magbuot whether mo appeal ta o dili. Okay, ganyan. So that's the difference between executive agreement on one hand and uh, treaty on the other hand. Member economies participate on the basis of open dialogue and respect for vies of all trans participants. Okay? All economies have an equal say and decision making is reached by consensus. What do you mean by consensus or consensual? With consent from the other members. It does not mean that you are USA or you are China, you will decide on behalf of APEC. No, because according to its charter, <laughs> sorry, according to its charter, they have an equal say. They have an equal authority to decide on behalf of the organization. So there are no binding commitments or treaty obligations here. No, purely cooperation. Commitments are undertaken on a voluntary basis and capacity building projects help members implement APEC initiatives. Again, just like in the, not like in the United Nations, wherein if you do not follow, if you violate certain 
policy in the United Nations, you will be reprimanded by the uh, P5. No, Here in ASEAN and in APEC, it's a voluntary act of the country. No, But of course, uh, sir, so on say effect, sir, no, it will... Uh, it will affect the the image of your country na nagsali-sali ka diyan tapos hindi ka man pala mag mag-comply no sa sa aims and purposes ng organization okay so para siyang ano siya ba uh, implied yung ano mo yung gagawin mo e kung ikaw naman bansa ka bakit ka pa sasali kung hindi mo naman intention na mag-follow sa protocols and mag-follow sa charter ng isang organization no so it would defeat the purpose in the first place so the structure of APEC is based on a uh, both a bottom up and top down okay four core committees and the respective working groups provide strategic policy <laughs> Recommendations to APEC leaders and ministers who annually set the vision for overarching goals and initiatives. So it's an informal structure, no? They will just meet in a particular event and they will just talk about economic uh, improvements and about economic problems. How will we resolve this? How should we start resolving this? And so on and so forth. So the working groups are then tasked with implementing these initiatives through a variety of APEC-funded projects. Members also take individual and collective actions to carry out APEC initiatives in their individual economies with the assistance of APEC capacity building projects. So this is the structure no, of Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. So they created committees and then they will talk about a particular matter assigned for that committee no and at in, it's an informal discussion sir uh, who comprises no or who can be a member or representative in the apec of course you have to be an economist no or if you are a president you must bring with you your economist because you will discuss about uh, economic matters economic activities the 21 APEC member economies jointly work towards the realization of free and open trade and investment in the Asia Pacific by 2020. Okay, of course, it would contribute to the Philippines, not just economically, but in political aspect also. So these are some of the other organization in so far as Asian regionalism is concerned, okay? So you just read them. One is the East Asian Summit. It is a unique leaders led of 18 countries of the Asia Pacific region formed to further the objectives of regional peace, security and prosperity. No? It has evolved as a forum for strategic dialogue and cooperation on political security and economic issues of common regional concern and plays an important role in the regional architecture. So it was established in 2005. So EAS allows the principal players in the Asia Pacific region to discuss issues of common interest and concern in an open and um, transparent manner at the highest level. So, sir, is it um, limited only within the Southeast Asia? No. They have six regional partners, China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia, and New Zealand. And, of course, U.S. and Russia got their membership in 2011. We also have the uh, APT ASEAN Plus 3 which began in December 1987 with the convening of an informal summit among the leaders of ASEAN and China, Japan and the ROK Republic of Korea at the sidelines of the second ASEAN informal summit in Malaysia. So it includes the 10 members of the Association of Southeast Asia, 
um, plus the uh, PRC Japan and Korea. PRC means People's Republic of China. So, what are the aims and purposes of ASEAN plus three? The ASEAN declaration states that the aims and purposes of the association are accelerate the economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region through joint endeavors in the spirit of equality and partnership in order to strengthen the foundation for a prosperous, peaceful, and peaceful community. So, Okay, let's focus here about the issues and concerns. The regional financial architecture has faced new challenges because Asia's regional economic development is a real factor of the global economy. The global financial crisis and the global imbalances are good examples. This implies that the regional financial architecture is no longer, no longer regional only. Okay, the Asian regionalism was actually has, has been criticized by a lot of people, no? Because they failed to, according to them, uh, according to the critics, they failed to resolve uh, fundamental matters concerning um, Asian countries. No? Global demand and financial stability are important to Asia and could be compromised by a depending credit crisis, a falling dollar, sudden unwinding of current account and imbalances. Excuse me. New health or security threats could make the flow of people and goods more difficult and expensive. So uh, digital and security threats is a problem. Okay. Environmental damage could result in radical ch changes in economic progress. So social instability could generate tensions and uncer uncertainty that overwhelm economic progress and many of these risks can be diminished with adequate foresight and cooperation and some strategies for doing so are addressed by this study. So I just think that they need to talk more, they need to discuss more frequently and they have to uh, create committees for certain problems because again, uh, the different problem is quite dynamic you know? and you cannot just resolve in one session all these problems because it covers maybe economic aspect it covers socio-economic it may be it may cover political aspect no so there's a need to dissect these problems and you have to talk and discuss on a particular problem only so these are the some criticisms that are usually hurled against um, Asian regionalism. Okay, they have not played a role in major in the major and long-standing regional conflicts, especially those that are handovers, holdovers from the Cold War period. So you, me, and all of us are affected by this problem. Neither have they mattered in the management of marital maritime territorial disputes such as the Spratly Islands dispute involving China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Malaysia. Philippines and Brunei. No, everyone knows China is claiming the entire Southeast Asian um, maritime territory. So, what's their basis? The nine dash line map. No, so it's based on the historical map in China, which covers the entire Southeast Asian region. No, so. Paano na lang tayo? Paano na ang mga bansang Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia? Okay? Wala na tayong maritime rights over these territories because China is claiming it based on the Nine Dash Line map. So that's one problem that the um, ASEAN or Asian regionalism has yet to resolve or talk. No? This is very crucial. No? This is the Paracel. This is the Paracel Island. Before pa nag-conflict dito sa Spratly and Scarborough, there was already a problem between Vietnam and China. Originally, sila ang nag-away. No? But because 
passive lang man din ang mga neighboring countries like Philippines, no? Isa sa Philippines sa mga passive. They allowed the China to you know, um, possess the paracel, no? So only Vietnam was fighting against their maritime rights because it is directly uh, affected, no, by the claim of China. So ito nga din ang tendencies and problems ng ibang countries because if we are not directly affected, we do not react to conflicts or matters like this. Only when we are already and directly affected, that's the time that we retaliate and talk about or discuss matters. No? So hanggang si China naman, umextend pa siya dito. No? Which is actually a violation under the United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea. Because it's far away, far away from the territory of China, no? And based on the UNCLOS, you just count 200 nautical miles, exclusive 200 nautical miles to determine your exclusive economic zone, no? So, yung blue na yan, yan ang economic zone ng Philippines, no? And it covers what? Almost... Uh, of the Spratly Islands and the Scarborough Shoal. Okay? So, kalayo ra sa China, no? This is, although here, they have a share in the Paracel based on the 200 nautical miles, but they do not entirely own the Paracel Islands, but rather it is owned by Vietnam. So, sir, what will happen if ganito, no? It is partially part of China and partially part of Vietnam. Of course, they have to share. No, that resources found there in that island. No. no. Imagine this is only the economic exclusive economic zone of China. Pero anong claim nila? Ito entirely based on the nine dash line map, which they always um, believe to be true and binding. No. So si Philippines. Ito naman yung. This is the baseline. Ang red. Ayan, baseline natin yan. Ito, exclusive economic zone. 200 nautical miles. So, definitely that's part of the Philippine territory. Okay? Based on the UNCLOS. But China does not recognize it. No? Ganyan sila ka dalo. Second, criticism. Failure to make use of available instruments of conflict prevention and resolution. For example, the ASEAN Regional Forum has not moved beyond its confidence building mode to a preventive diplomacy as was clearly predicted when it was set up in 1994. Kasi nga, wala silang enforcement power. No? It is solely and exclusively for economic operations and discussions. They cannot even punish. No? They cannot even reprimand a country. So ASEAN itself has yet to use its dispute settlement mechanism to resolve bilateral territorial disputes such as that between Cambodia and Thailand over the Preya Vihar Temple. Sir, is it possible, sir, to, to um, give the ASEAN, to give ASEAN the power, no? Just like the United Nations. Pwede po, no? But they have to change the charter of the organization. Kasi under the current charter, yan lang ang powers ng member state. No? But again nga, even if you give them power, if China will not recognize it, wala rin. No? That's the problem. That's the problem really. So the case the party has relied instead on the International Court of Justice. So you already know the cases um, to be brought or subject matters to be brought in the International Court of Justice and those cases to be brought in International Criminal Court. These two organizations are different. Third is the failure of regional trust building. No? Supposed to have been brought about by regional groups like the ASEAN is reflected in the emergence of what seems to be a significant arms race across the region. China is investing massively in its military. No? Increasing its defense budget by double-digit percentages year after year. So Japan has effectively crossed uh, 
the 1,000 nautical mile limit for its naval operational radius and a naval competition for dominance in the Indian Ocean may be merging between India and China. So in Southeast Asia, countries like Singapore are engaged in competitive arms acquisition. So even if they engage in, in competitive arms acquisition, um, the ASEAN really um, does not focus on the military aspect. No? Di pa sila ga, ganun ka uh, molded. No? All the countries actually in the Southeast Asian region are not into military aspects or military operations or naval operations. No? Just like US for example, US is exercising its freedom of navigation within the disputed islands dito kanina no yung pinakita ko kanina so fourth criticism is on the economic front there has been no regional free trade area under the auspices of APEC or APEC which was created partly with that objective in mind Instead, bilateral trade arrangements have flourished, thereby undercutting the rationale for wider regional arrangements. So this is a uh, parang bata pa na organization. Eh, no? So for it's easier for countries to engage in bilateral talks rather than to engage in multilateral agreements. No? Economic agreements ha. Mas madali kasi magsabot kung duha lang mo instead kung daghan mo because you have differences and these differences might create a potential conflict. Okay? Fifth, the region is regularly visited by the natural calamities. There is no standing regional humanitarian and disaster assistance mechanism in place despite periodic attempts to create one just like the... Um, United Nations and the EU actually, no? So if there is a problem uh, faced by a particular member state, the EU has a certain organ which would help that particular region. So transnational threats such as illegal migration, terrorism, and pandemics continue to be dealt with on an ad hoc or bilateral basis lang, no? Without significant multilateral action. Although in theory, Multilateral talaga ang ASEAN, but in reality, people or countries used to utilize bilateral agreements rather than multilateral talks. Kasi nga, mas madali and mas convenient. No? Kung si Indonesia and China mag-enter into agreement, if there is no conflict, walang issue, walang problema, then they can enforce that agreement. But if you engage in two or more countries, no? Differences will always be a possibility. So it's much more convenient and easier to have bilateral talk rather than engaging in multilateral agreements. There is no regional peacekeeping force or even a more limited standby arrangement. So that is the fifth criticism. Sixth is the on human rights and social issues. No? The recently created ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission of Human Rights or AICHR uh, is merely a body for the promotion rather than protection of human rights. So again, it lacks enforcement authority. Asian regional institutions have not undertaken any significant social agenda like the development of social safety nets to protect people impoverished by economic downturns. So, uh, Ang nakikita ko dito, bakit walang enforcement authority gaano ang ASEAN? Because of the preservation of our independence and authority. If the country is not willing to surrender some of, of its independence or a little of its independence, no? so there, there can never be uh, enforcement authority. Okay? Alangan, gusto ka nga, i-punish ka sa isa ka-country no? because you violated something. So neither have they addressed the vital issues of environmental degradation, climate change, and energy security. Multilateral agreements and action have also not succeeded in preventing forest fires in Indonesia 
or competition for energy resources between India and China. So we can really say that uh, ASEAN or Association of Southeast Asia Nation is still on the process of um, strengthening its um, authority, strengthening its focus no, as an organization. Because again, um, inter interconnectedness and interdependence is the key no? if you want to achieve economic operation. Climate change efforts limited at best at any level are pursued mainly at the global rather than regional level. No? So that, these are the, the these are the criticism against the Asian regionalism. So according to Bertrand Russell, no, the only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation. Be it military cooperation, economic cooperation, or political cooperation. No? The key there is interdependency. No? We cannot just survive on our own. We need our neighbors to help us in the same way as they needed us to help them. Okay? So thank you for listening and God bless always. See you next week.